The following dramatization is based on actual events and is told from the perspective of Debbie and John Challender and Marilyn Killeen. Certain names have been changed, composite characters used, and scenes and dialogue created for dramatic purposes. scared, John. Are you sure we're doing the right thing? Yes, I'm sure. We have to do this. It's going to be a long, hard day. Things are heating up. Now, I want everybody out there and the media control. to whistleblowers, Marilyn. They wind up alone, standing on street corners, paranoid someone's after them. gentlemen, my fellow committee members, and members of the press. This hearing is the first opportunity we have to take sworn public testimony about the controversies at the University of California Center for Reproductive Health at Irvine. Infertile couples now spend over one billion dollars per year in a medical quest for children. The current process invites abuse. You see, patients have a profound desire to have a child. And many medical professionals have a profound interest in having lots of patients. That's to quote Dr. Ricardo Ash, director of the clinic. First, you will hear the story of John and Debbie Challender, a couple who went through the fertility clinic at UC Irvine under the direction of Dr. Ricardo Ash. You will then hear the story of Marilyn Kilane the whistleblower, who asserts that she informed the university of the actions of the clinic. My fellow committee members, this is about whether fertility doctors are becoming godlike in their sway over nature. And when doctors play God, who's watching? And so now, I would like to call the first Senate witness, Mrs. Debbie Challender. Mrs. Challender, will you raise your right hand, please? Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you are about to give to this committee shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes, sir, I do. You may sit. 
Mrs. Challenger, will you tell us, please, how you became acquainted with the fertility clinic at UC Irvine and uh, why you decided to come forward today? I came here to tell my story, Senator. I came here in the hope that it would protect other women, other families. I was an infertility patient for several years. I desperately, desperately wanted to have a baby. But my husband John and I had been unable to conceive. We already had a, a beautiful adopted son who was named JR. And from the moment I saw him and held him, I, I knew he was mine. I felt he had come into this world to be my child. But, but I wanted to have another child to feel life inside of me. I wanted to give birth. I wanted to feel whole. To have a baby with this man. With my love. You are worse than he is. Why do you encourage him? Come here. Come here, let me watch that. Come here. Come here, you. We saw that coming. He's a good kid. He is. What? I want to go to Irvine, John. I want to see Dr. Ash. Debbie, we've been over this a hundred times. But he can help us. He has one of the highest success rates of any doctor in this country. We've been through this before. I know, but not at a clinic. Not with Ash. Oh, honey, I want to have your baby. Honey, please. I want to feel what it's like to have a child inside of me. We have JR, isn't that enough? Of course it is. It's just, I'm scared, John. I, I, I'm scared that, that one day I'm going to wake up and it'll be all over. I'll be too old. It'll be too late and... And I never will have known. Never will have given birth. Please, come with me to Irvine. I don't want to do this. Why not? Because it isn't right. It's not natural. It's the most natural thing in the world. Not like this, not this way. If God wanted us to have a baby, he would have given us one. If we don't try, John, and our time passes, we're going to regret it the rest of our lives. I'll regret it. Please. We go for a consult, Deb. That's it. No more. Just consult. <laughs> Thank you. Excuse me, um, we are Debbie and John Challenger. We have an appointment with Dr. Ash. Here, fill this out and give it back to me when you're finished. Thanks. Um, how long before we get in to see the doctor? I really don't know. Right now, he's running at least an hour and a half behind. I have to call the station, tell him I'm going to be late. Yeah, um, my husband is a dispatcher for the fire department. 
He really can't be gone too long. I'll do the best I can. Now, if you'll just take a seat, I'll call you when the doctor's ready for you. Oh. This is John Challenger. Challenger, my husband John. Please sit down. I'm sorry we don't have a great deal of time today. I'm running late. So, you have tried to get pregnant before? For 10 years. Really? And you've never been pregnant? Once. Well, I, I thought I was. It turned out to be a false alarm. How long ago? Three years ago. How old are you? 37. And you? I'll be 43 next month. Any problems? No. I have a daughter by a previous marriage. We have an adopted son who's four. But you want to have a birth child. Hmm? Yes. And you? Yes, very much. Then what seems to be the problem? I don't know. Uh, we've taken all the tests and everything seems to be fine. I've just never been able to uh, conceive. Mrs. Challenger, you will be pregnant. I can guarantee you a pregnancy. How can, how can you be so sure? Because of the medication I use, my methods, I require a laparoscopic surgery before we even begin. It's mandatory for all my patients. I perform surgery on you before the surgery of the harvest. Are you familiar with laparoscopy? Oh, yes, I'm a nurse. But I'm not, and I'd like to know. It's a procedure where we go into your wife's abdomen with an instrument called a laparoscope. If she has any blockages, we'll be able to see them. Is this really necessary? Are you aware that I was a pioneer in the gift procedure? No, I didn't know that. Gift? is where we retrieve eggs and fertilize them inside the woman's body using the fallopian tubes as a channel. Now, I brought that procedure to this country and I've had the greatest success with it. That was mine. I invented it. I didn't know that. I I'm sorry. After I've examined you, I will determine whether you are a candidate for the gift procedure or whether in vitro will be a better way. What's the difference? With in vitro, we fertilize the egg outside of a woman's body, then re-implant it to grow inside. We try to harvest enough eggs so that we can freeze the embryos for the patient's future use. And that's it? That's it. We'll schedule an exam. And on your way out, okay. my nurse Beth, the young woman who brought you in, will explain all the procedures and what you have to do. Mrs. Challenger. A lot is demanded of you now. Like what? She'll have to inject herself once a day and come in here to my lab every morning at exactly the same time to be tested. My nurse Beth will draw blood and take urine. Um, for how long? We have to go month by month. 
We want a cycle that will produce a successful harvest. You have insurance? Oh, yes. <laughs> the insurance where I work covers fertility procedures. That's good, very good. Because if not, we'd have to ask for cash up front, just for the surgery. The medications alone will cost uh, 1500 to $2,000 per cycle. Insurance does not cover the medication. You can find some of these drugs at the pharmacy, but we dispense them here. We ask that you purchase them from us here at the clinic. Cash only up front. It's better that way. Easier for us and you. Now, there is only one thing that I personally require of you, Mrs. Challenger. What is it? That you do everything I tell you when I tell you to do it. There's no thinking about it. Is that clear? Yes. You must do everything my way or I cannot work with you. Fine. Good. Please stop by and see Beth on your way out. She's in charge of all my patients. Good luck, eh? $2,000 for medication? We can handle it. I'll work double shifts. You can't. How can you handle that and the fertility and JR? I'll manage. You know, just show them how the procedure is done. That way, you know, I am not comfortable with this, Deb, and I don't like him. I understand that, John, but he's got a reputation around the world. Who cares about his personality? As long as he can help us. Oh, okay. How did we get this far, Deb? I thought we were coming in for a consultation. That was our agreement. I want to do this, John. I want to start now. I, I need to do this now. Please, John. We start now. You think you can handle your own injections? Uh, I work with needles all day long. I, I'm an RN. I forgot. Sorry. You'll need at least a month's supply, Dr. Ashu Anchu, on the Pergonol and the Lupron to start. What are the side effects? Fatigue. Moodiness. Nothing that both of you can't handle, I'm sure. <laughs> Now, this is for your injections. Mm -hmm. You know you're going to have to come in here every day for us to test you. Uh, what time? Before work. We're here by 7 a.m. Any more questions? Good. And one more thing before I forget. We need to know if you want any of your eggs used as donor eggs. For older women, mainly, who can't produce enough. No. Okay. And just put an X in the box that says no and mm -hmm. sign. Now, if you have any problems or questions, please call me directly. Don't call Dr. Ash. He has a very large patient load right now and can't take the time to be on the phone, okay? Okay. Then, why don't we set up your first surgery? <laughs> German pastor. Well, thank you. See the house later this afternoon? You bet. Well, I'd better tail our son before he disappears. Um, he's probably with ours. I'll go with you, John. Catch up with me? Yeah. Do you have a minute? Chapel or my office. Chapel, please. <laughs> I don't know what to do about John, Pastor Dan. You mean the baby? He's uncomfortable with the way we're doing it. He just doesn't feel it's right. No, well, maybe it's not. How do you feel? Oh, I haven't been this happy since we got JR. I haven't felt this good. But are you sure this is the right way, Debbie? Yes. Are you sure this is 
God's way. Yeah, yes, it is for me. Well, have you talked to John about it? Yes, I, I, I have. And he'll do whatever I want. I don't want to hurt him. And I don't want to do the wrong thing. But I want this baby. Debbie, do you believe in God's plan? Oh, my faith is strong. It's very strong. Then let that be your voice. Let that help John through. If you don't want me to go through with this fertility thing, I won't. No. I want the baby, but I'm scared, Deb. I'm scared of what it'll do to us. What it'll do to you physically. It won't do anything, honey. It'll just make me moody <laughs> and temperamental. You know what it's like. We've seen other couples. And very emotional, that's all. We can go through this together. DR needs a little brother or sister. Come on. Take this chance with me. decided to call him Pinocchio. Pinocchio! I know, Mommy. He has to be a real little boy. Just like you, kiddo. Just like me. <laughs> Darling, what would you say if, if Mommy and Daddy had a little baby? Adopted like me? No, if it came out of Mommy's tummy. Would you like a little brother or sister? Yeah. You would? You wouldn't mind having a little baby around here that you'd have to help take care of? Could I play with it? Sure, every day. Then I like it. When is it coming? <laughs> soon, darling. Oh, I hope very, very soon. That was it. Shortly after, I began the fertility treatments with Dr. Ash. Then you started the injection. Yes. And what happened? Were there any side effects? Side effects, Mrs. Challender. What happened to you? I was sick. I felt like I was going to die. The drugs made my whole body bloated. Fine, I'm just a little tired, that's all. When do you see your doctor again? Not for another two weeks. Don't you think you should call him? No. No, I'm sorry, Marianne. Well, actually, I, I've tried to call him, but um, I never can reach him. I just seem to talk to his nurse, Beth, when I go in there in the morning. What does she say? She says that uh, this reaction is normal and that as soon as the eggs are mature enough to harvest, I should come in for the surgery. Well, I think you have a fever. No. Come on, let me take your temperature. No, I, I, I'm so warm, that's all. I think you should go home. No, I'm fine. Honey, you're sick. 
I'm worried about you. I don't want you on the floor. I might scare my patients. <laughs> Go home. Get into bed and call your doctor. Okay. Let me know if you need anything, all right? Yeah, okay. I just talked to Beth again. Look at you. You can't even move and you're still going through with it. What did Beth say? Look at me, Deb. Look at me. I want this to stop now. No. Not when we've come this far. I can't stand to see you like this. It's just a little while longer. How do you know? I don't like it, Deb. I don't like this Dr. Ash, and I don't like his clinic. He makes miracles, John. If like him or not, he creates life. When it's finally over, we'll have a baby. I want you. It's more important to me to have you well than to keep going through this. It's my body, John. It's happening to me, not you. What happens to you affects me. Don't you understand that? I love you, Deb. I just want us to be happy. I will be. As soon as the doctor tells me I'm pregnant. I will be. Mrs. Alejandro? two hours. Do you have any idea how much longer it's going to be? Dr. Ash hasn't come in yet. He had an emergency over at his other clinic. He's running very late. We can reschedule. No, 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 no. That's all right. I'll wait. Debbie Challender. Oh, finally. Hello. So how you feel? Oh. Better, thanks. Boy, it's been a rough couple of weeks. I know. Some women just have a reaction to the drugs. It's all part of it. Yeah. Thanks for everything, Beth. You know, all your help and everything. My pleasure. We're both nurses, Debbie. It's our job to help people. Mm -hmm. Just the way it is. Good luck. What? You know something. Come on, what is it? Tell me. I think Dr. Ash would like to tell you himself. Beth. Uh-uh, this one's the doctor's news. Counseling receptionist, please come to the waiting area. Counseling receptionist, please come to the waiting area. Dr. Ash? Mrs. Challenger. According to your tests, it seems that we are ready for the first step of the in vitro procedure. I want to operate tomorrow to extract the eggs. Tomorrow? Your tests indicate that you're ready. We have only 24 hours to extract the eggs. <sighs> you need someone to drive you here and bring you home again. Oh, my husband can do that. No food or water after midnight. <laughs> By this time tomorrow, we'll know how great your chances are. Okay. <laughs> We'll know how many eggs we have to work with. <laughs> I'll be here by 6.30 tomorrow morning. I want to start the injections by 8. Okay. <sighs> Dispatch. Structure fire. Hey, 
Engine 106, Task Force 105, Battalion 17. Structure fire at 1962, Wilshire Place. Cross Street is Alameda. Your attack frequency is PT 108. Your time is 1700 hours. John Challenger. I'll catch the next flight out. You're home early. Guess what, honey? Great news. John, it's time. Dr. Ash is going to harvest the eggs now. I have to be at the clinic tomorrow morning at 6.30 for the surgery. Did you hear me? Honey, it's time to take the eggs. I, I really think it's going to work this time. What? What's the matter? What's wrong? I have to leave tonight, Deb. Why? My mom's sick. She's got pneumonia. She's so sick. Oh, honey. I'm so sorry. I'm not going to be able to be with you tomorrow, Deb. i got to be at the airport in an hour. Can't you postpone it? No. This can't wait. If, if we don't do this surgery now, it, it might be too late. I don't want to leave you, Deb. Not now. Not like this. I called Arlene. I, I'm sure she and Pastor Dan will take me to the clinic and bring me home again. Maybe you could stay with them. No, I don't want to scare JR. No, honey, you go. I'm gonna need you now. I, I'll be fine. Just call me when you get there. I'll help you pack. Come on. Wake up now. It's over. Did, did we have good harvest? It was very successful. Dr. Ash harvested 46 eggs. 46? Most women only produce 11 with us, maybe 12. Okay, thank you. Can you Oh, no, no, oh no, please stop. No, I just want to go to sleep. Let's go. Come on. No. It's time for you to go home now. I, I can't. Oh, no. Dr. Ash, where was he? Dr. Ash had to leave as soon as he was finished with oh. you. You can help me out here, honey. Here you go. All righty, here we go, okay? It's time to get dressed now. Okay. Okay. Her name is Debbie Challenger. She should have been out an hour ago. Oh my God, Debbie. I don't understand how you can send her home like this. I assure you, she's fine. She'll be back in a couple of days and we'll check her out then. You wait here. I'll bring the car around. Excuse me. She needs a hospital. No, no, Darlene. I, do, I just want to be home in my own bed. Really, I, I, I'm okay. I, I, I feel better than I did. I just want to go back to sleep. I assure you, Mrs. Mettler, she will be okay. She has the number here in case anything goes wrong. Here's Dean. Come on, honey. Let's get you to the car.
JR, help me, please. Help me, JR. Hello? My mommy's sick, Pastor Dan. Please, can you come here now? I'm on my way, JR. I got here as fast as I could. How is she? Critical. Stable. Beyond that, it's too early to tell. I should have been here. I should have been with her. It still would have been the same. I gotta see her. I gotta be with her. Um, can I help you? My wife, Debbie Challenger. She's in there. You can go in. With you the minute that I saw you. How is she? You were 16. Fresh. <laughs> sassy. You walked into that restaurant and I hired you. And I knew that day I'd marry you. Mama. That I'd spend the rest of my life with you. How's Mama? Mama died before I could get there. Don't you leave me, baby. You pull through this, okay? You stay with me. Don't let me be alone. Mr. Challenger? I'm Dr. Rubin, one of the residents who's been taking care of your wife. She was pretty sick when they brought her in. I know. What happened? What went wrong? I'm not quite sure. As closely as I can tell, she had hyperovarian stimulant syndrome. What does that mean? Her ovaries were overstimulated. Your friends also told me that they took 46 eggs from her. I don't understand. Well, the norm is four, maybe six. 46 is beyond anything I've ever heard of. Why did this happen? I don't know. I drew blood several times during the night. Your wife had been given Pergonol along with several other drugs. It's fine. It's OK. What other drugs was she given? We don't have the tests back yet. We don't know. Hey! Hi. You look wonderful. Oh, please. How are you feeling? <laughs> I'll feel much better when I can get back home soon. Mm -hmm. 
fact, Reuben just wants to keep you a few more days, <laughs> just to be safe. Yeah, how many times have I had to say that to <laughs> a know. patient? Oh, before I forget, you know Beth from the fertility clinic? Yeah. She's called every day since the night you were admitted. Yeah, I, I guess they're concerned. Debbie, scared would be more like it. Hey, she you. Hey, hi. Mm. <clears throat> See you later, Debbie. Okay. Feel better. Bye. Bye. It's a gorgeous day outside. You feel like taking a walk with me in the garden? Uh, no, I don't think I can make it. Sure, you can. Come on, I'll help you. Listen to me. We need to talk about this. I don't want to talk about it. Look at you, Deb. You can't even walk by yourself. I just had a bad reaction, that's all. To what? I don't know. The, the, the Pergonol, the Lupron? You heard what the doctor said, Deb. You were overstimulated. Now, why do you keep denying everything? Why are you blind to all this? For the baby. For our baby. There is no baby yet, Debbie. You know, nothing is worth this. What does any of it mean? If you're not here to share it with me. I want to have a baby, John. So do I. But it isn't worth your life. almost over. Really? There's nothing more I have to do. There's nothing more I have to take. All I have to do now is wait. So what's going on? Dr. Ash asked me to call you. The eggs are ready. If you're strong enough, he'd like you to come in for the implanting. When? Dr. Ash wants it done today. Now. <laughs> okay. Okay. <sighs> I had the procedure that day. Fertilized embryos were implanted in my womb, and seven weeks later, the first flutter of a heartbeat on the ultrasound confirmed that I was finally pregnant. Seven months later, my son J.D. was born. Thank you, Mrs. Challenger. That's all we'll need from you now. We may, however, recall you later, so if you could please return to your seat. I think now we'll take a uh, short recess. There will be no interviews in this chamber. Quiet, please. Quiet, please. Quiet. I am calling this session to order. I will have quiet. Quiet. Mr. Matheson, I assume your client has come in answer to his subpoena, since he refused to appear of his own free will. He has, Mr. Senator, but my client will not be testifying at this hearing. Your client is under subpoena of the Senate of the State of California. Dr. Ash, will you testify? No, I will not.
With all due respect, Senator, this is our position, and we do not intend to disclose the reasons. Counselor, you know as well as I do that I can't force your client to testify, but I can and will force him to sit here under subpoena for the duration of the hearings and listen to the statements of each and every person testifying here today. Is that clear? Ladies and gentlemen, I am now calling a 15-minute recess. Dr. Ash, how do you feel about these allegations made against you? In the interest of the testimony you have just heard, I'd like to call a former employee of the university clinic, someone who will bear witness to the charges. So I would like to call Mrs. Marilyn Killane. Mrs. Killane? Yes, here. <clears throat> I'm here, Senator. Thank you. You can just pull that form. Senator Hayden, esteemed members of the Senate Committee on Higher Education, and to all the families here, my heart has broken for the outrageous wrongs that were committed at the hands of Dr. R Ricardo Ash. I'm sorry, Mrs. Cooley. You uh, may yes. continue. Uh, I had moved here from New York, where I had worked over 10 years at the fertility clinic at Cornell, one of the most prestigious in the country. And so when I came to Irvine, they put me in their fertility clinic as a temp. So then you were technically an employee of the university? Yes, sir. I was hired by Human Resources. As office manager? Exactly. Um, I ran the office. I ordered medications. I, um, I kept things running. I, I, uh, we all had um, known of Dr. Ash's work. Right, now, did you leave New York specifically to work at Dr. Ash's office in uh, Irvine? No, sir. My, my daughter had moved here. My son was already living here. I, I wanted to be close to them. I had nothing in New York but my job. Mrs. Killane, when did you first notice that something was wrong at the clinic? Right away, Senator. I was, I was asked to do things. What things, Mrs. Killane? Mrs. Killane. Mrs. Killane? Yes. This is very important. What were you asked to do? May I? Yes, Beth, what is it? I have something for you from Dr. Ash. What? It's a package he wants you to express overnight to his former clinic in Texas. What is it? It's fertility medication. Which? It's from Ash's stash. The HMG Masson. He's using HMG Masson? It has to go out by tonight, Marilyn. No, I'm not sending this out. This is not an approved drug. Well, what would you like him to do? I don't care what he does. It's not my problem. I'm not going to do this for Dr. Ash or anybody else. Dr. Ash wants this sent out. He's going to have to do it himself. Are we clear? Are we clear, Beth? 
Yes, we're clear. Marilyn? If you won't do it, I'll take care of it myself. Oh, I wouldn't recommend that. If you get caught, you could lose your RN license. Don't worry. I won't get caught. And if I do, I don't have as much to lose as you might think. There's more, Senator. Much more. Every Friday was payday. Ten, sometimes twelve thousand dollars in cash was stuffed into envelopes and given to the doctors. The doctors got their cut. It came from the patients and the sale of the drugs. I'd like to ask about the episode where you produced a receipt signed by Mr. Ash. And when presented with the receipt for um, $7,000, Mr. Ash responded that perhaps he had left the money in his Maserati. The amount was not $7,000. It was $2,355, I think, to be exact. And it was from a patient who was going through the procedure and whose check had bounced. And the only way she would be allowed to go through the procedure was if she paid for it in cash. She brought it to me. I gave it to him. He called me. He couldn't find it. He said, well, maybe I left it in the Ferrari. And uh, he said, I know I signed for it, and I know you have the receipt. Uh, well, maybe it's in the Ferrari. It was not a Maserati. They all look alike, don't they? I wouldn't know. I don't drive one. But he says to me, I know you gave it to me. I know I signed. He was very pompous about it. He said, oh, well, what's $2,300? And I thought to myself, well, that's my salary for a month. But... And he didn't discuss it with me anymore. I had my documentation. I had my receipt. I had a practice of writing everything down. Now, and some of the drugs sold through the clinic were drugs that the FDA had not approved. That's right, Senator. The one I knew about was HMG Masson. Where did it come from? South America, Mexico. And what about the resulting births? Were they normal? I had no knowledge of that. What I did know was that the drugs were not FDA approved, and that's all I needed to know about the Masson. He kept it locked in a cabinet in his office. Everybody called it Ash's stash. He had the HMG Masson sent in from South America and Mexico. It was not FDA approved for general use. It was designed to produce mass amounts of eggs to be fertilized. But for every wrong action, there was always the hope of success, the promise of new life. So much that was wrong and so much that was good. Yes. Yes. Very good, very good. Oh my, yes, there it is, oh my God. It was hard to go on, but I couldn't walk away from the good. Mrs. Killeen, what else went on at the clinic? What uh, did you see? People coming in late, chaos, total chaos. Much of the staff was not qualified to do their jobs. We're two nurses short this morning. Has anyone heard from Beth? Did Beth call in this morning? No, no, she didn't. Um, Beth, there you are. Where have you been? Do you have any idea what time it is? Noon, I suppose. You are expected here at 8 a.m. Obviously, nobody here gives a damn about discipline or ethics. Lighten up, Marilyn. I was just over at the other clinic working. The doctors told me it was all worked out with the university. You have responsibilities here, Beth. You're an RN. Well, not really. What? I'm not licensed, Marilyn. What do you mean? I'm not an RN. You're Dr. Ash's nurse. Yes, I'm his nurse, but I'm not licensed. I'm not an RN, Marilyn. You counsel and advise patients. You dispense medications. Dr. Ash trained me. What's your background, Beth? 
your background. I came through the clinic as a patient. I was looking for a career, and Dr. Ash brought me in. How long have you been here? Two years. And it is the best job that I have ever had. You hold patients' lives, women's lives in your hands. What else is going on here, Beth? What else should I know about? I was upset. I didn't know where to go, what to do. I only knew that I had to start keeping records and gathering information. As much information as I could collect without getting caught. so scared. I was sick inside. I knew I had to work fast. The more I read, the more I knew something was wrong. Very, very wrong. hell is Ash? I don't know. I've been asking. I've got patients waiting in the waiting room for three hours. The hell with that. I can't worry about them now. I have a patient who's been under anesthesia for a while now. And that's... What? What? This isn't safe. He's got to operate now. I will not leave her under any longer. We're not prepared to... I'm sure he'll be here. He knows about this procedure, doesn't he? <sighs> My anesthesiologist refuses to put anyone else under again unless Ash is in the operating room. Has this happened before? Yes. I will not do this anymore, Marilyn. I'm a trained surgical nurse. One of the only people around here actually licensed and trained. Sounds like Ash. Good morning, Dr. Ash. Uh, yeah. Dr. Wallace, there's called. Uh, yeah, but he's someplace he can't be called back. He's going to have to call you later. Cancel, yeah. Okay. Mrs. Kelly called. Mrs. Roberts. Okay. Dr. Villanueva called. What do you want to do? Dr. Ash. Dr. Ash. We have a very serious situation. Can I see you for a minute, please? You can talk to me right here, Marilyn. This is my clinic. I'm in charge here. I do not report to you. It's all right, Marilyn. I'll take it. Dr. Ash. You have a woman in surgery who's been waiting for you. I will not leave her like this any longer. Are you a physician? Are you qualified to make judgment calls about a patient? If you do not operate now, I will call the authorities. I will be in as soon as I have changed and scrubbed. Now, if you will excuse me.
Hello? Hi, kiddo. Did I wake you? Hi. No, I was just getting out of the shower. What's up? Shelly, when we were at Cornell, do you remember any of the doctors coming in late or leaving patients on the table under anesthesia without being in the room? No. Are you kidding? Why? Wait. Do you remember that they ever brought their drugs in from out of the country? No. Why? What is going on? Oh, God, Shell. There's something very bad going on here. I'm very worried. Something very bad. What do you think it is? I don't know. It's something I can't see. It's more than sloppy management. It's something I can feel. Whew. Then you've got to do something about it, Marilyn. Oh, Shelly, it's so frightening. I don't know how. You've got to. You just can't let it go. Excuse me. Yes, can I help you? Yes, I have an appointment with Rita Minnelli and Norm Lufter. I'm Marilyn Killane. Uh, yes, Mrs. Killane. They're running just a little bit behind and they asked if you could wait. How long? I have to be back at work. As long as it takes. Look, I told them at the clinic that I had a doctor's appointment, so I have to be back by... If you'll by... just take a seat, Mrs. Killane, they'll be with you as soon as they can. Look, it's important that I talk with them today. It's imperative that I see them today. As soon as they can, Mrs. Killane. Now, please, sit down. Look, I can't wait any longer. I have to go to work. I'll come back this afternoon. They have appointments off campus after lunch. I'm not sure they'll be back. I'll be back. Were you ever able to get to see Rena Minnelli or Norm Lukter, Mrs. Killane? Yes, Senator. But I still didn't quite connect what was going on. Well... These are very serious charges you're raising, Marilyn. I know, but as you can see, I can back up everything I've told you. Are you aware that two years ago, the university auditor conducted an investigation of the financial practices of the clinic? No, I'm not. Phil Kagan, one of our best auditors, handled it. He found that one of the center employees was stealing. I had no idea. But now, Marilyn, you're telling us there's still more going on here. Well... We have got to investigate. This could be very damaging to the university. Marilyn, I want you to let us, let Norm and me handle it. We'll take over from here, okay? You know what I'd like, Marilyn? I'd like to have your files. I want to turn them over to Phil Kagan. No, oh, I'm sorry, Norm. I can't let go of these files. So, how long before you can get into it? Right away. Right now, the moment you leave my office. And how long before you know anything? Oh, Kagan is good. He's the best we've got. He'll get right on it. And as soon as we know anything, we'll call you. In the meantime, Marilyn, keep taking notes. Keep records. Keep us informed. It's crucial that you keep records now for all of our sakes. May I speak to you for a moment? Yes, of course. Please, come in. I have a problem, and I need your help. I have a surgery scheduled in a little while to harvest a patient's eggs, and she'll only allow me to work with her. But you see, 
I have a lunch date. With Rina Manelli and Norm Luchter. I'm sure you're familiar with them, Marilyn. I got it. What is the problem, Doctor? Well, if I operate, then I can't have lunch. I could cancel, but I don't want to. What do you think, Marilyn? What should I do? Well, if it were I, I would cancel the lunch. But you see, I don't want to do that. Well, then cancel the surgery. No. I don't want to do that either. But then this really isn't your problem, is it, Marilyn? I'll figure something out. Hello, Marilyn Killeen. Marilyn, it's Rochelle Petrie. Hi, Rochelle. What's up? Listen, I forgot to log a chart in my lab. Can you do it for me? No, I can't do that, Rochelle. Your lab is locked. I don't have the key. I know, but I'm going to tell you where I keep a spare. Oh, please, Rochelle. I'm not comfortable with this. Can't it wait till tomorrow? It has to be tonight. Where are you? Uh, Houston. Marilyn, I need to know the count on Mrs. Williams' chart. I need to know how many eggs. Oh. Please, Marilyn. The only one I trust. Okay, tell me what to do. Rochelle had told me to go to the cryo tanks and get the count directly from Mrs. Williams' vial. She'd given me the code number. But then I decided to check the files as well. Sixteen eggs were listed on the chart, but only four were in the vial. The records were way off. Hello, this is Phil Kagan's office. Uh, no, I'm afraid he's got someone with him right at the moment, but if you'd like to leave your name and number, I'll make sure you... Do you realize that if you don't help me, I have nowhere else to go? No one at this university will listen to me. I am going to try to help you, Marilyn. But I'm going to ask you to go home and wait for my call. I don't want to go home, damn it. I'm tired of being pushed and pulled everywhere I look. There's another implication, another threat. Go home, Marilyn, and wait. I will call you.
Yes, Marilyn Killeen. Uh, it's Phil Kane. Yes, Phil. You know Cadillac Jacks? Yes. I know exactly where it is. I'll meet you there in a half an hour. Okay. Yes. Yes. Investigating. Why didn't you tell me? Can I trust you? First, Rochelle Petrie cannot be a licensed embryologist. She didn't even graduate from college. Oh my God. How did she get the job? Ish. He found her in Texas and trained her. What's her background? I don't know yet. I'm still checking. <clears throat> no, thank you. Last month, Del Roth came to me scared and upset. He alleges that Ash was overstimulating the patients, taking their eggs without their consent, and implanting them into other women. Is he sure? How many children are out there? None with their biological parents. Does the university know about this? Does the chancellor know? Well, she must have heard something. The rumors are flying. Who else? What else is going on? Insurance fraud. There have been allegations of insurance fraud, of double billing, and they're getting money for unapproved drugs, cash only. You don't play with them, Marilyn. They don't like it. You came in, you suddenly changed the rules. You're a threat, a whistleblower. A whistleblower? They're calling you into a special meeting. They'll all be there. When? On Tuesday. Can they fire me? Well, not legally. But technically, they can do anything they want. They just call it something else. What do I do? How do I handle it? File a formal complaint with me. We need proof, Marilyn. I can't nail them without proof. Stay strong. No matter what they try to pull on you, don't back down. I don't know, Marilyn. According to your file, you have been difficult, hard to work with. That's a lie, Rena, and you know it. Marilyn, do you know what happens to whistleblowers? They wind up alone. Standing on street corners, paranoid someone's after them. That's ridiculous. Is it? Here. Read for yourself. Whistleblowers are lonely people, Marilyn. They can't keep friends and they can't keep a job. Are you threatening me, Rena? I'm only giving you the facts. Are you asking me to withdraw my complaints? Because I'm sorry, I can't do that. I won't. No. Fine. Doesn't really matter anyway, because we're moving you. What do you mean? We're finding you another position in the university. You can't do that. Clinic staff says you're a problem. Doctors don't want you around. Because I know the truth. No, because your employment review just hasn't been up to our standards. You're all in this. Up to your eyeballs. But I'm not going to let you get away with it. Meeting's over, Marilyn. I'm not going to stop until someone breaks this. I'm not going to go away. You can move me, you can blacklist me. 
but you can't make me shut up. Do you understand? I'm not gonna go away. I am a whistleblower. I've been blacklisted by every fertility clinic in the United States. No office. No office in any branch of the medical sciences will hire me. And I have guilt. When I was in the embryology labs and I had the records right in front of me, I put them away. I didn't realize it then. I didn't understand what I was looking at. I didn't believe what I was seeing. I tried to stop them, but I couldn't. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The day the call came, I thought my life was perfect until that day. I'll never forget that day. Did the university call you, Mrs. Challenger? No, it wasn't the university, Senator. It was a reporter from the Orange County Register. I wanted you to see this before it hit the streets. Mrs. Challenger, some of the eggs that Dr. Ash harvested from you are missing. Some of them are fertilized. We don't exactly know how many. What do you mean? Eggs have been switched. Embryos sold. 50 families have been affected so far, and the number is rising. J.D.? Is he my baby? J.D. is definitely your son. How do you know all this? I have a source inside the university. Who? I'm sorry, I can't tell you that. I want proof. All right. You see here, on your wife's medical charts, on the day of your in vitro, it was in fact your eggs and your sperm. But you'll also see 11 of the embryos that you had frozen are unaccounted for. It seems Dr. Ash has taken them. How could they do this? Well, I have a consent form here. It shows your signature, agreeing to be the egg donor for other women. No, that's a lie. I, I, I never agreed to anything. I specifically told them my eggs are not to be used. Look, you can see where I checked the box denying permission. They whited out my mark and checked the consent box in another color of ink. Look. Look, damn it! It's all right, it's all right, Mr. Challenger. Where are my embryos? Where are my babies? We don't exactly know. Some of the records are missing. We, we do know that some went locally to a few families. The rest of them, we don't know. Look, my editor at the register and myself, we would like you to come forward. No. We can use this. We can... No! Deb. Please, please go, please go public. Just talk to the press. Get out. Debbie. Look, the university is denying all of this. Ash is gone. We need the families, and no one will talk to us. People have a right to know. You can stop this from happening again. Get out of my house! Listen to her, Debbie. Let go of me. You can help us to force them to reveal where the children are. Let go of me. They betrayed me, John. They betrayed us. Dr. Ash, all of them. 
How could I not have known? How could I not have seen? We have to go public with this, Deb. I can't. Honey, we have no choice. Calendar, I want you to know how grateful I am. We all are. It's been a long day. Let's break and reconvene tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. There's a reporter who wants to talk to us. I can't. He's been waiting all day. I, you go. You be okay? Yeah, I'll be fine. Hey, Mrs. Challen. Hi. I have so been wanting to meet you. Oh. To talk to you. Thanks. Me too. Can you talk now? Do you have time? Please. Sure. It's funny all this time and we've never met. There are so many times I wanted to call you. Oh, why didn't you? Oh, I wish you had. I, I didn't think it was right. I was the employee. You were the patient. I, I didn't know what to do. You've done so much. You, you opened the door. You opened the door so that other women won't have to suffer through what my husband and I have been through. I hope so. It's all I want. It's an awful feeling to be so scared and to have to hide it all the time. I know. I feel like I've been raped. I understand that. You were violated. But in spite of that, and maybe because of that, you found the courage to come forward today. I'm so sorry I didn't help you, Debbie. I just never want another woman to feel like this. Well, that's why we need to have legislation and new controls. God, these doctors think they're God. They think they're above the law. Some of them, they think they can control creation. Do you know I walk through each day knowing that there are pieces of myself out there? Children, I'll never know. Where are they, Marilyn? Are they safe? Are they warm? Is there someone there to love them and to kiss them goodnight? Debbie, thinking like this will make you crazy. I can't help it. I just wish, I wish I'd never gone through this whole no, thing. No, you don't. You just wish this hadn't happened, all this bad stuff. <sighs> there are good clinics out there, Debbie, and very responsible people. But whatever happened there at Irvine, the good news is you got your baby. Yeah. My little J.D. You have your son. It's almost over. This part, for now. Do you ever think about them, John? Children. Every minute of every day. I caused this pain, didn't I? You? It was never you. I forced you to Dr. Ash. 
you ever be able to look at me again? To forgive me? Forgive you? <laughs> you gave me JD. You gave me both our sons. I love you. Then you don't blame me. I love you. My husband and I have gone public with our very private pain. This hasn't been easy for us. We live each day of our lives knowing that we have children out there. I don't know how many. I don't know where. But I feel them. Every day of my life, I will feel them. Members of the Senate, there are no laws governing the fertility industry. And it is an industry. I don't even know whose job it is. Maybe the government, maybe the AMA. But there has to be some kind of system that watches over all of this. If there had been one entity to whom they were accountable, one body, And this isn't just my husband's and my loss. There were hundreds of families who have gone through the University of California's Center for Reproductive Health at Irvine, whose eggs, whose, whose children may have been stolen. Families who have not yet had the courage to come forward. Please testify. And to all of you out there who, who are going through this or are thinking about it, oh, please don't let this stop you. I, I'm afraid that, that our experience has tainted the fertility world for others, and that must not happen. These clinics offer hope. <laughs> and hope for a new life. But each new life must be protected for the future, for us, for the children. <laughs>